YouTube is here. What up? YouTube. Back at it. It's Thursday again. What's the word? We're about to get into something that we've never talked about on the podcast or, or on your leisure period ever. Ever. Government contracting. It's a billion dollar situation. Hundred billion dollar situation. So yeah, we're gonna we gonna get into it. We're gonna get we ain't seen nobody else talk about it. Government contracting. We like to set the trend though. Yep, we're gonna let our esteemed the owners are coming in. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I know it keeps every time somebody's joining every time. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one today. I'm looking forward to it. Um, first and foremost, hope everybody's staying safe out here in the age of Corona. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. So, how what's you doing? Up? How you doing? Doing pretty good. You know, staying Corona free. <laughs> most importantly, it's the most important thing. The most important thing. How y'all doing up there? Where are you physically located again? I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Florida. Florida. Shout out to Florida. Shout out to Florida. Um, yeah, we're gonna get into it in one minute. We just waiting for everybody to get in. Um, get everything straight. But yeah, how's it how's it going? How's business going for you? So business has been pretty good. Um, so we had to do like a slight pivot, not too much, uh, because the the business is really a software company. So we built a platform to really simplify it. So now, you know, our focus was going to agencies this month to start selling to them, but everyone's been so reactive with the whole coronavirus, everything. So uh, we're holding off for a little bit, but we still plan to go to uh, start selling the platform to the agencies now, so. Okay, dope, dope. So yeah, we, we could we could get into it. I'll give the, um, I'll give the, our YouTube, shout out to all everybody on YouTube, shout out to all the EYL University members in the building. So um, yes, this is something that um, when you reached out to me, um, I, I realized that we hadn't covered yet and mm -hmm. it's government contracting, right? So it's like everybody, well, maybe not everybody knows, but the government spends is, they spend um, hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe even more every year on all kinds of stuff, right? Like this, the government has to pay for different supplies and a lot of it is not from government agencies, it's from outside individual companies and they have contracts. We spoke about this a little bit with yeah. um, the podcast with Slim and Huskies. Yeah, they, they, they shed some light. Um, even when I was doing the research for this, I was like, I've heard these terms before and, they, and a shout out to the boys that some they actually use uh, some small business loans from the government to help fund their project. Yes. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so Shakia, right? Yes, Shakia. Look at oh, that. Shakia. 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 Um, <laughs> Corona free. Yes. <laughs> and the name of your company is Government Liaisons, right? Yes. So, GovLiae. GovLiae. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, we're going to go over everything one on one and how we always do with our EYL University. You guys know you can just raise your hand at any time and ask a question. YouTube, feel free to ask questions as well. So um, yeah, we want we can just jump right into it. So government gov government contracting one on one, right? All right, let's let's start let's start at the beginning. Um, when we say government contracting, what are we talking about? Are we talking about one particular area of government contracting? Everything government contracting? Like what's the one on one on government contracting? All right. So when it comes down to, I want to do a quick disclaimer because a lot of people they get government contracts and grants mixed up, right? So grants. Are grants is free money that's basically given to government, it's given to organizations to fund an initiative or a program or something that's going to like benefit the society. But government contracts is when the government is looking to procure or buy a service. So that's why with many local government agencies, it's called a procurement department. Um, but there are opportunities to sell from the federal government level. Of course, they spend over $4.7 trillion on like everything, which I'll show a tool that you can use to really see what they are spending and where they're spending it later. Uh, state and local government agencies spend more than $1.7 trillion on products and services. And then you also have organizations like 
uh, that are like quasi government a little bit or organizations that are funded by the government as well uh, in some part. So that includes universities, colleges, uh, hospitals, any of those organizations that, you know, actually gain funding from government agencies as well. So that's pretty much like what we talk about when we say government contracting in a nutshell. And there are opportunities internationally to sell to international governments. So, so federal, the federal government spent $4.7 trillion. Yes. And the, the local government spent $7 trillion. 1.7 so what, what type of things I know I mean obviously the top thing that comes to my mind is defense and I think that probably is the top of everybody's mind defense um, but what other type of things are the, that are the government spending money or finding contracts on I love this question because people they they think it's defense or they think it's construction right. because construction is always happening but they purchase everything from paper notebooks consulting services cleaning services um marketing services, uh, digital uh, media, photography, sometimes for different events, event planning services, catering. Mm. <laughs> um, they purchase, what else? Where are we now? I hit a few of them. Just if you give me anything, they purchase majority of that stuff because you got to think about it the same way. A government agency is ultimately a business and the people who are using the products or services are the end consumers, you and I. So uh, I think back from when you know, I was in the military, we were on board the aircraft carrier. We had toilet paper. We had to buy that from somewhere. We had uh, trays that we, you know, for the food, food, you had to get that from somewhere as well. So, you know, you think about all the ways that you have to operate in your daily life. And then of course, how a business operates. So as a business, you know, you need paper, you know, if you're printing stuff out, computers, um, software, definitely software is huge right now. Software, uh, of course, as we continue to transition, is only going to continue to expand um, the in the government technology space, they spend over $99.8 billion on just software technology products. Just and That's just that one industry. So. That makes sense because I, I read, I was they said paper plates. I'm like, why would the government need to take a plate? <laughs> but now that you're saying it, yeah, everyday things that we use, obviously they need it too. That makes sense. Exactly. Thank you. So why does it really, we are we are the government. We the same people that are working for it is us, basically. Yeah. So do, do the, does the government have anything that they do in-house? Like is everything sourced to private companies? So majority of it is sourced to private co uh, companies because they can save time on it. And also they can save on like hiring people at the end of the day, like it's still public uh, public dollar. So if they can outsource it out, it's you know, an easier job on them. But there are some things or some government agencies who have the budget to uh, maybe hire someone who can do it. So I know like some uh, state and local government agencies, their budgets aren't as big, but um, at the federal government level, they can, you know, purchase anything. But a lot of times they don't have the capacity to really bring somebody in and keep them, keep them on board to do this stuff, so. All right, so, okay, let's get right into it. So I have a business, HVAC or a food catering business or whatever, dry cleaning business and I want to get a contract with the government, right? Yeah. Um, so what is the first steps? Who do I reach okay. out to? What do I do? So first few steps is identifying what, um, what agencies you want to work with and what capacity can you provide these products and services in? Because like, let's say you are in Florida and you want to do, you want to win a contract for, you know, some services that is in California that's also going to require you to have your team, you know, all, like your entire team there. So you have to think about the logistics in terms of, can I afford to bid on this contract, pay to take my team out there. So it's really about like figuring out where your profit margins are mostly. So if you can only do business in your local area, like here, if I'm a business in Broward County and I can only do business here, there are 31 cities in Broward County. And then that's not to count Miami-Dade County who has, I believe 32 or 34. So the opportunities are all around. So it's identifying those organizations because at the state and local government level is decentralized. So everyone's processes are completely different. That's why we are we built our software to make it easier for a business. They'll be able to create one profile, one time to do business with multiple agencies instead of going here to sign up, going there to sign up and applying for all of these different things. Uh, but at the federal government level, uh, they have a, a simple process because it's a central agency or well, it's a centralized process for them. Uh, you 
apply for a Dunn's number, which is with Dunn and Bradstreet. And then you go in and you um, create you a SAM account. So a SAM.gov account, you register. And once you have that, those two things done, you can get started on um, finding contracts with the federal government and bidding on the contracts. So, so that's you said, couple, uh, you said a couple of things there. How do we even win a contract? Like what's the process that we have to go through to win a contract? Okay, so it's multiple ways that you can do it. Um, there is the process that most people know about, and that's the bidding um, side of it, right? So you go, you source, and you find these contracts and you bid on them, right? Uh, that's the, the most common one that most people know, but there are also opportunities to sell to the government if they have government credit cards. So majority of the governments have government credit cards with a spending limit of anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000. I know right now the defense is up for $10,000 where they can purchase you know, any product or service that they may need with a credit card. So it, it alleviates you from having to go through that. So those are called micro purchases. Mm -hmm. And then they have opportunities to, let's say you have a new and innovative solution uh, to do something, right? You have a new software company or you have a, a new process that no one has done before or no one can implement. You can do two things with that. You can submit a unsolicited proposal where you really just reach out to uh, either the department that needs those services, right? Or I'll come back to that as well. But the departments that need those services or the uh, procurement team. So um, you can reach out to them and let them know what you have going on um, and talk about the different product that you have and you create that, uh, that proposal and you can submit it to them. So that gives you the opportunity to be able to leverage a sole source opportunity. So what is that? That's when you are the only person who can provide these, these products or these services. So that's what the sole source side of it. I said I was going to get back to the department thing. So another way when, you know, really going through this process is, most people think you always have to go to procurement, but you don't. The biggest thing is figuring out or reaching out to the department that needs your products or your services. So if you have a landscaping company, who you would reach out to would be someone in the parks and recreation division to see, you know, what projects they have available, what do they have coming up, anything that's expiring. So that way you can, you know, be in the loop for that opportunity when it comes up. And then also, even when it comes down to food service or uh, event planning, if it's something new that they don't currently have, that's your opportunity to really like pitch it to them and say, hey, you know, I know you don't have this right now. And I see you have X, Y, and Z coming up. Let's talk about this. And then one more thing uh, to that question. So the at the federal level, all of the agencies have someone involved who is the Office of Small Business Utilization Person. So it's basically the business liaison um, in a sense. And what they do is they advocate on your behalf as a business owner to do business with these particular agencies. So let's say, you know, uh, Rashad, you found a contract with the uh, Minority uh, Development Agency, Minority Business Development Agency, and you wanted to bid on this opportunity but you weren't sure about like what the steps were, you could also reach out to the Office of Small uh, and Disadvantaged Business to do that. So that's like basically that question in a nutshell. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. So um, somebody said commercial cleaning service. I would assume that's a go, right? For government contracts? Yes. Trucking? Yes, yes. Tr trucking? Business. Trucking for sure. If I can share my screen right now, you know, as we go through these, I can, we can talk about how much money is being spent in these areas. So let me ask you a question. You're, you're a veteran. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service. Appreciate you. it. First and foremost. <laughs> um, so our, the, since it's the federal government spending, somebody had a question. What about veteran opportunities? Do they have any special program for veterans? Yes. So they have special programs for like, so these are called certifications. So uh, once after a business has went through that process of getting registered, they can also get certified. So what certifications do, certification gives your business a marketing advantage because let's say out of that 4.7 trillion, the government put a, which is actually, they put a cap on how much can be, how much needs to be spent with uh, minority-owned, veteran-owned, women-owned businesses, uh, businesses that are located in a hub zone. I'll come back to the certifications, but they put a set-aside amount, which is 25%. So 25% goal on how much of this contract or how much of this money needs to be spent with small businesses. So that's huge when it comes, when you think about like the 
opportunity uh, to do business as a small business. And then of course, there are ways to do business with corporate, I mean, yeah, with the corporate partners who win these contracts. Because they have these set aside goals set next to it, if a agency, I mean, if a larger company wins a contract, let's say it's $10 billion, like the one that um, Microsoft won, right? So say it's $10 billion. They have to meet a certain threshold for working with certified, well, small certified businesses. So those are the certificate. That's what the benefits of the certification. So with the certifications, the Microsoft bid out, they were bidding versus Amazon, right? But my yeah, that's the one that happened in November. $10 yeah, yeah. billion. <laughs> Ten billion. Bezos was upset that he felt that was it was something personal. It was, uh, <laughs> you saw yeah, that. The, yeah, the Washington Post wasn't friendly to the president, so uh, he felt like it was something personal. He tried personal to contest it, it, it and everything. Yeah, he, I think he tried to contest it and everything because I think that's when they were saying basically he was no longer the richest man in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was that person. <laughs> EYL University. If you have a question, please raise your hand and ask verbally. It's a lot easier. Um, I'm sorry, I cut you off. You was about to go to a website. Oh, oh yeah, but I want to hit hit on those certifications before I go to the website. Um, yeah. But the certifications, so there are certifications at the federal government level, and those are that those are the women-owned, veteran-owned, um, 8A, which is a disadvantaged business program. It's not necessarily a certification, but this program is seven years long. And if you're in this program, you get the opportunity to, you get basically first dibs on different contracts and opportunities. You have to be in business for three years in order to be a part of this 8A program. They had the hub zone, which is for businesses that are located in a historically underutilized business zone. So if um, there's a, a map on the SBA website where you can really check to see if your business is located um, in one of those hub zones um, that you can do SBA business with. But in all, you said what happened? The SBA side is busy. Listen, <laughs> uh, everything is on there. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, so and then at the state and local government levels, they had their own certification processes as well. And there are also certifications that are managed by um, certifying authorities like uh, NMSDC. Y'all heard of NMSDC before? No, the National no. Minority. Yeah, that, so that was the National Minority uh, Supplier Deve Development Council. So they have a, a minority certification that you can use to do business with corporations. So, uh, and this is just in the supplier diversity space, which, you know, you get into that, you see all of these organizations have goals to do business with small and diverse businesses. So, uh, but I, I want to get back. We, we have a oh, question. No. Um, I'm going to come to Antoine and I, I have a few questions I want to ask you too. Antoine, I am unmuting you and the floor is yours. Make sure you unmute yourself. Antoine, you there? That's crazy. I guess not. All right, so while he's trying to figure it out. So the, the DUNS number, I, I've read that that is extremely important. Can you tell people the importance of it and how and where they can go to apply for that DUNS number? First, that's Absolutely. the first question. And then the second question, I see somebody on YouTube asked it as well, is the NAICS code, uh, mm -hmm. the importance of that and where they can find it. Because I know that that is kind of like, that tells you what type of business you have, correct? Yes. So let me hit the DUNS number question first, and then okay. we'll go to the to the NAICS because I I can the NAICS because I can walk them through it on this uh, screen. Can you see my screen right now? Yeah, we, yeah, can, we, see we can see it. Okay, all right. If I can spell, give me a second. All right. So there, the DUNS number is a a um, nine digit code that is basically your business um, social security number. I know you already have an EIN, but this is the second one. So what this one does is it allows agencies and corporations to search your business's financial history. So you can see, you know, if this company has defaulted on any loans, um, you know, just understanding how the finances of this business operates as well. And the government agencies usually use it uh, to really just keep track of uh, these businesses in these different areas. So you can go on the website right here is fedgov dot dmb dot web form dot I mean, com forward slash web form i think i dropped this in the chat right mm -hmm. okay i'll drop it in there 
So you can go to that website to apply for one. How the heck do I get to the chat? There we go. Yeah, you can go to that website to apply for one. And it's completely free. Um, they will offer you like a bunch of their services. Of course, every company is going to do that. Uh, they will offer you a bunch of their services that they have. But uh, once you get this Dunn's number, like I said, then you can go ahead and start doing business with the government agency and uh, I'll show you a little bit about how to do that. So you just see right there, click here to request. So sometimes when you're going through like the bank, you'll go ahead and like set up a Dunn's number. I got hella stuff in here. But sometimes you'll go ahead and set up a Dunn's number and you may not know. So they have you to go through this process to see if you already have like an existing Dunn's number. What am I missing? Antoine, you there now? Yes, sir. All right, there he goes. Antoine, go ahead. The floor is yours, man. How are you doing? I wanted to see how long do you have to be in business in order to to qualify for government contracting? Or do you have like a waiting period? So you don't necessarily have to have a waiting period and there's no like time limit, but majority of the things that they would like to see when you bid on these contracts are like, is do you have past performance, right? And past performance can mean a, a few different things. So in, and that can mean you can, you've done business with, you know, a corporate company before, or that can also mean, you know, your personal background of like the work that you've done. So you can use that as your past performance, because at the end of the day, you are, you know, you are the business and your experience is what counts towards, you know, the success of that business. Okay. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm starting an electrical uh, contracting business. Mm -hmm. I do have 11 years experience on my own. So I will be able to qualify uh, for government contracting? Yes, you will be able to do that, especially if you have all of your license and everything, you want to make sure you have that stuff in place. Um, but the best thing to, to do initially for you would be to partner uh, with a prime contractor on a sub job, right? So if you see, you know, let's say your city is getting ready to come out with a uh, proposal for some construction work or something, uh, you can reach out to them because majority of the time they will need a prime contractor on, I mean, a subcontractor on these jobs. So that gives you an opportunity to leverage past performance without bidding on the contract and becoming the prime, like, like front, out, like right out. You know what I'm saying? So it allows you to get your feet wet in the space of doing business with the government. Does that help a little bit? Yes, it did. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. No problem. Thanks, Antoine. Thanks. Um, to somebody, to somebody in EYLU said they couldn't see the screen, so I, I, I'm not sure what the issue is. But um, all okay. EYL University members that are on this call, I only do have Zoom access to ask questions like Antoine just did. But you'll get um, emails. You'll get an email with this, and it also it'll be posted on Ernie Elysia University, so you can watch it whenever. So if you can't see the screen, don't worry. You can always watch the playback on EYL okay. University. Um, and it's, but you also, it, you'll get emailed it as well. So. Yeah, yeah, if there's any technical difficulty, it, it, we're also on YouTube as well right now. Yeah, so YouTube, YouTube is on. You can catch it right now. As well, so yeah. Is it working on YouTube? Yeah, 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 we're watching it. Yeah, no, I work, I'm watching it right now, it's, it's good. Um, so yeah, yeah, this this is really good um, information. I hope everybody's paying attention to this because um, this is something that is not, like, I don't I don't know none of this stuff. Yo, so I, I got a bunch of, a list of questions. I had no idea. <laughs> Yeah, we, we never learn anything like this in school, but that's for damn sure. So this is just one of the things that we, we, we do with our, our platform outside of the podcast, EYL University. And every now, like once a week, at least once a week, we do like open classes so people can kind of see what it is. But we do like four, we did like four classes this week. Yeah, on man, we Section eight housing. We did um, yeah, market host, Mondays. wholesaling real estate. I'm talking about just for EYL University. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. so yeah, so if anybody's interested in joining EYL University, we got a special running until May 1st. And then May 1st is going up, right? Yeah, if you heard the last episode, uh, episode 76, you heard that the price is going up May 1st. That is effective. We can't go, go against that. Yeah, uh, so. There's a lot of content, and you get access to our private real estate Facebook group. Um, so act now. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. You know the rules. The real estate group is crazy right now. So, yeah, 60% uh, off sale till May 1st. It's 149 for the entire year. Um, mm -hmm. Code EYL149. Go to EYL University. I just put it in the comments if you're interested. 
But uh, okay, but you also, before we even go any further, so you have a consulting firm, like you actually help people do this? Yes, so I, we do help people do this, but like I said, we are been focusing more on the software side of it. So really just simplifying the process all together. That's the focus. So, so. But yeah. So, all right. So where we are, you got, you so got a So I think we're up to the NI, uh, ICS code. Oh. All right, real quick, before we fin get past that, when you get to Dunn's number, uh, yeah. you'll have to request, but there are a few documents you, that you'll need to really prove that, you know, your business is um, a, you know, incorporated business, basically. So that's, that's just all it is. So you get started with that. So we'll go to the NAICS codes. This is big time. I, every time I, I searched up government contracting, those, uh, that acronym came up and I was like, all right, what is going on? And I, I went to the census site too, that's, that's crazy, yeah. So this is literally the where you will go to see where your business fits as far as categories. Is that, am I yes. getting that correct? Mm -hmm. So when you come here, uh, what the next codes are is, is really just categor categorizing the businesses. So that way they can, you know, and administrative purposes, the government can tell how much they are spending. And then they can also, you know, that's how you find opportunities using your next codes. So right, if we have anybody in uh, EYL University who want to like throw out a keyword that their business, like something that their business does, you can throw it in there uh, while I talk to Troy for a little bit and then we'll take on and see how we can find some next codes. Uh, let's, let's take truck. Can we do trucking? Let's, trucking. let's, let's, yeah, let's, do, let's trucking. do trucking. Trucking. Logistics. Somebody said logistics. logistics. So logistics. like when you come to the census, the census is going to show you how much money the government is spending in this actual area. And basically you can find out if this is an area you want to go into um, based on how much they're spending, right? You can say, all right, there's a lot of money being spent. Um, I want to pursue it, right? Is, am I yeah. getting that right? Yeah, so not the census website. I'll show you the website. The website to find out how much is being spent is USA. You are spending. Ah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So uh, what is this one? 541614. And then we go to USA spending. You check out that keyword search. And it's five four one six one four. What's the five four one? What's that's oh, the code. That's the next code. So that that next code right here is logistics okay. management and consulting. Okay, I saw big money. Let's go back. So, so what are, what are we looking at right now? So this is the next code. The dis description of the next code and what fits under that next code right here. So if you can see. Um, so we got any inventory management, warehousing operations, or you know any of that stuff. Freight traffic consultant, freight uh, rate auditor services, manufacturing management. So this is a lot, pretty much all the careers in in that industry. Michael McDonald mm -hmm. for the super chat, appreciate it. Thank you. So can we go back to the screen and see how much how much is being spent in the industry? Thank you for the super chat, Mike. Appreciate yes. it. So uh, five four one six one one. So now that that is up, let's 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 fix it by date. But up here at the top, you can already see right total prime award amount nineteen point three billion dollars in this within this code alone, right? Uh, and a number of transactions one hundred and nineteen thousand. Uh, so another good thing about this site is you can see who are the companies winning this award. These awards. Mm. See, this company is doing a lot of small jobs. As you they got see. the whole first page. That company yeah. got all of those contracts? So these aren't the contracts. These are more of like, you remember I was saying about those micro purchases? Because if you can see, like, it's little one-off gigs, like $260 yeah. here, $2,000 there. The key to a micro purchase is that it has to be under $3,000, correct? Yes, under $3,000, $5,000, or $10,000. It really just depends on what agency you're doing business with. And I read somewhere that statistics show that 70% of all the transactions are micro purchases. Absolutely. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, man. We That's it. <laughs> Small purchases, because no one really wants to go through that procurement, you know, process is long, paper intensive. <laughs> like, it's a long process. Yeah, so, they have the government credit card. <laughs> exactly. And even when it's not the credit card, sometimes they can just do like a PO. It's something quick that they can do. It's a PO, uh, which is a, just a purchase order, and they'll do it that way and go go for it, go for it from there. So, which was the last one we did? Trans? Did we do transportation? No, nah, somebody asked about transportation, though, so we can we can okay. do that. So this is another thing too. 
Thanks. Sometimes you have to be very detailed in terms of like what you're looking for, right? So you can see here they have 113 transportation codes. So uh, you can, you know, narrow them down from that, you know, different different stuff that you are doing in these different areas. So here's freight transportation. I know I always get a question about this one that 418212. I mean 481212. So 38 billion. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And that's only 31,000 transactions. So they are spending good money in this area. So, so the $100,000 tra $100, transaction that's at the top. Now, this is no longer micro. No. What, so these are, these, these are these yeah. simplified acquisition purchases? Or? Yes. So simplified acquisition, those are usually be, below anything below 100,000. Okay. Right. So, um, so these are simplified in between 25 and 100,000. These are simplified acquisition purchases. And then you can see maybe not that one, but you can see maybe not that one either, that $2.7 million contract, Sky okay. Aviation Corp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you can, and I was saying like, you can see, you know, the company that won the contract, the amount, the agency that won it. And then if you click on it even further, like you can see, when the end date is and you can see when this is coming up right so yeah. the potential end date is in july now i know that this is in july boom if i'm in this space i need to be reaching out to whoever this contracting officer is on this job yeah i mean i'm, I'm looking at the numbers right and i'm thinking 38 billion in this industry only thirty-one thousand contracts compared to the industry we just left this looks like something that you know we probably should get into absolutely I think that when you see like the lower number of transactions and a, a larger amount of like money, that's always a good industry because that means those jobs are bigger. Like mm. every single time, it's always something bigger. So and you, and you can take on that. A lot of people get nervous and, you know, decide not to go after those bigger contracts, but that's what a, the opportunity is. And if you need help, guess what? You can subcontract some work out. You can find some people to help you with it because now you have the the funds, the capital to do that type of stuff. So, and, and yeah, for like people, everybody's asking like individual questions. The whole point of this is to actually show you how to do it on your own. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> not really beneficial if she just does like 30 different categories. <laughs> like she's literally showing you the website to, to go to, the process to actually do it. And now it's like, okay, <laughs> just because we did trucking, that's just to kind of give you an example as a reference point. Mm -hmm. It's not to like literally do it for you. Yeah, I see numbers are coming in. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, it's not to literally do it for you. Nah, it looked look like somebody sent us the lotto numbers. <laughs> yeah, she's oh, showing you, like she's literally showing you how to do it yourself. <laughs> Is this on YouTube, Troy? Yeah, YouTube is all good. Yeah, yeah, shout, shout out to YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. No, a, a quick question. Uh, so, what is the the average length of these contracts? Okay, so it's usually um, the sweet spot is three to five years. So uh, they'll and you can also get a year contract, and they can say, "Oh, you have options on this contract." So what that option does is it allows you. Let's say when that year is you know coming up, it allows you to renew that contract. So you always want to get those options in place because it, you know, lock in a, a good three year contract, a good 10 year contract. I'm good with that. Uh, they can be 10 years, but they, they have to have options in at a certain point to allow um, a competitive, um, a competitive like process, basically. Somebody, somebody asked the question twice. So if you're trying to sign up to EYL University, you go to EYL University and then you go to learn more, click learn more and then you go to subscribe, and then you go to the annual, and then you enter the code. The code is EYL149, and that is a 60% discount, um, $149 for the entire year, and that's changing May 1st. So that's how you, that's that's how that's the process to do it. Um, now, can we talk about minority businesses? Like, cause I know there's programs to mm -hmm. give minority women owned businesses um, a certain amount of government contracts. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. I'm going to go to the SBA website as I do it as well. Um, so that way you can see some stuff too. So while well, those are like those certified, those certifications and, you know, you can go here to this SBA website and you can also see woman owned service, disabled veteran, 
uh, that minority or that uh, business development. So those are usually for minority owned businesses. Uh, and then like the hub zone one. So as you go through it, you'll see like all these different certifications that you, you know, if your business, like if your business cat, like is categorized in one of those areas, they have certain amounts of money set aside for these particular industry. And like I said, 25%, that's huge. You know, oh, it's 23 actually, 23% of all federal contracts. Must go to women or minor minority owned businesses? any of these certified businesses. So, and also the certif the certifications, they also have like their own goals next to them. So women own 5%, disadvantaged five, service disabled three and hubs on are three as well. So and you can also see like contracts, the contracts that are worth seven, 700,000 or more, they have to have a subcontractor on board. They have to have a subcontractor in, involved in this process. So that makes that ensures that, you know, these set aside businesses are getting these opportunities um, that so, are available. So when, when you're, you know, going about your business and trying to create it, you know, I know you kind of stress this. Um, what, are, what are some of the important factors when targeting the audience that you're going after? Being focused. That's it. Um, being focused in what you do, uh, you see, you'll get a lot of businesses who, you know, whatever the government is, is buying, they want to sell it to them at that moment. You don't want to do that one because it makes it harder for you to locate opportunities. Uh, and, and it's okay to cross sell things. Like if you are in, you know, the janitorial space, you know, you do janitorial services, but you also sell, you know, wholesale products. Um, like cleaning um, products and equipment and stuff, that's fine as well. But you don't want to hop from, you know, janitorial to like, what is it? Uh, catering or something like that, or, you know, providing parts for aircraft. Those are two completely different areas. So it, it's all about being focused because that that's how you identify uh, the opportunities. You find define the opportunities based on that. So let me show you like just a quick example. So, you know, we use that next code, which one was it? 481211? Yep. So this is where uh, when you're fine, look, you're sourcing for federal government contracts. You go to beta.sam.gov to find the opportunities that are available. So I'm just typing in, I'm only sourcing for uh, contracting opportunities. So 481212. Let's see what they have available for this right now. Okay, so, you know, as you can see, like they, they have a few options that are available that just came out on the 22nd. So that's why I'm saying it's important to be focused because that allows you to be able to, you know, target your search and find these opportunities in your area. Be that, you know, go-to person in your particular area and industry. So, yeah, see these opportunity in where the Department of Agriculture, the date that is ending um, that you have to respond to this by. And then you can also see right here, it's set aside for a small business. So those are like the examples of, you know, being focused and leveraging those small business set aside opportunities. Mm. Grip B, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Thank you. Super chats always appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there was a, a little bit of confusion on my part, and maybe you can help clear this up. So having a government contract is one thing, and, and most people, when they think about the government, they think about all the, the benefits that you have, like health benefits and insurance benefits as well when you're in the government. Mm -hmm. Do those exist when you are a government contractor? No, so because outdoor. you're an independent business. Mm, okay. You're an independent business at that point, so it's, it's all up to you. It's on you. All right, we have a question from our earners. Edvard, I've unmuted you. The mic is yours, the floor is yours, my man. Yeah, hello. Um, how you doing? Uh, would it be smart to contact the companies that win the contracts, like the large contracts? Because you said that they do have to be um, subbed out. So if they're in our uh, code, would it be smart to reach out to them directly and like, uh, offer your services? Absolutely. And that that, S, that uh, USA spending tool is a good tool to use to do that because you can see um, the, even if they haven't won a contract previous, uh, 
well, if they haven't won a contract like today or yesterday, reach out to those ones who won contracts previously because you can be on their list of subcontractors. Uh, and using that same site, you know, you see those companies, you search them and you figure out how to connect with them. Let them know, hi, uh, my name is Edvard. I am a, the found, I am a, um, the, my business is a, you know, minority owned business. We're certified in X, Y, and Z and we're interested in blowing blah, blah, blah. We specialize in X, Y, and Z. So it gives you the opportunity Opportunity to leverage a uh, opportunities to be one of their sub contractors. Okay, thank you. Of course. Thanks, Edward. Appreciate it. And, and those sub opportunities are big. I don't know if you answered that question somebody had about um, the real estate group, but if anybody has a question about how to join the real estate group, once you become a member of EYO University, you can have access to a private real estate group. Just go to Facebook. The uh, Earn Your Leisure University Private Real Estate Group. That's the name of it on Facebook. And just request to join. We verify that you have a membership and then we let you in. So that's that's the process. Barbie, we are coming to you. Barbie, what's up? I'm mute, hey, I unmuted you. Unmute yourself. You're ready. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you how fine. You how you doing? We, we had a great talk on Sunday too. What's up, Barbie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to this week too. Yes. I have a question. Um, Okay, Troy, I came in late again, so I'm not sure. <laughs> don't worry, don't <laughs> worry. We're not penalizing you. you go back and watch it. It's archived. Okay. I'm not sure if you talk um, talked about JV's uh, joint ventures at all already, but I had a question about those. Are you okay. familiar with those? So I am, actually. What would be your question? Okay. So I wanted to know, are those um, public information where you can see um, how a, a joint venture is made up between the two um, companies. Okay, or so it depends. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll let you finish, I'm sorry. I, I was saying, or do you have to go through SBA or, because I know a lot of this information because it's um, government information, it's public information, but some things you do have to um, go through SBA to find out. Okay. And if it's for a particular um, like opportunity, like if it was a, a, a contract that was won, you can search that because that is public opportunity. But the best way, um, if it's like a, one of the joint ventures that are created, you know, for the woman owned business or any of those programs, it would be uh, best to contact the uh, SBA for it, for that information. And you can also oh. see that stuff online. Um, like if you go to Sam, Sam, um, the Sam website, you can use that website to search for businesses as well. And you can see who owns these businesses. Okay. But it won't ever like disclose the actual contracts, will it? No, it will only show the companies. It may show the companies. It doesn't always even show the companies because when you form a joint, joint venture, it's its own entity. So unless someone is doing like a deep search, you know, going to like the state websites to see, you know, who the registered agents are on this um, opportunity, no, they wouldn't be able to see that information. Okay. And with the, I know there's certain guidelines with joint ventures. It's like, um, I think it's like 51, 49, so that the smaller company um, won't be taken advantage of by the larger one. But can they ever change the percentage value or would that be something that they do and they shouldn't be doing? So they can't change that value at all because at the end of the day, like it is, it's still to protect you. And that's the only way that this venture maintains, you know, whether it's woman owned or service disabled veteran owned, that's the only way that venture maintains that status, uh, that certification status. So if they do something like that, then you're no longer in compliance. And that becomes an issue. And the, the, the SBA, they sue for fraud, believe me, big time. It's a hell of companies who fake that they were woman owned and they've been sued a lot uh, or mm -hmm. found a veteran and um, just put the company in their name. They've been sued and they had to pay all that money back. So that's the last thing you want to do. Don't get yourself stuck in something like that. No, I'm not going to do it. Oh. I, I, thank you for confirming that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Senegal, EYO alumni, superstar alumni, one of our most prestigious alumni. Uh, Chris Senegal just checked in on YouTube, doing his big out there in Houston. Shout out to Shoot, Move, Communicate Films um, on, the, on the Super Chat. He had a, they have a question. Can active military 
get a military contract? Yes, you can get certified as a veteran owned business uh, and you can uh, get a contract that is for that's set aside for a veteran owned business. So the answer is yes. And if you can start now, because I definitely wish I would have started before I got out. What, what did you use in, a, use in a, the Navy? Yes, Navy. So five years. <laughs> so can you, you can't have two government contracts at the same time, though, right? No, you can have as many as you want. You can. OK, yeah. OK. Now, now, the stipulations are only for like grants mostly. So sometimes you can't have more than one grant, but the certificate, uh, the contracts, you can have as many contracts as you win. What's the, somebody said Sam website? I was just going, I was just going there. So Sam. like, yeah, you, you go, you go. No, no, you go, go ahead. Say I was going to ask the same question. Like I have wrote it down, like literally it's on my paper, the Sam website. I saw somebody on YouTube just asked it. Can you explain what it is and what the benefit of using it is? Yes. So SAM is the federal government's registration portal. So once you register in SAM, that's how agencies can locate your business uh, for different opportunities. And that's how you get paid. Right. So you set when you uh, complete this registration, uh, you go through the process of putting in all of your next codes, all of the um, processes. If you want to be added into, you know, the uh, but disaster relief registry, so they'll know who to contact your business for these opportunities. Uh, that's what that SAM registration does. And they also, you can also use SAM to search for different businesses. So any of those businesses that, you know, you say you found on the, the USA Spending website, you can go come to SAM and you can search for that business in here. And all of their information will come up, everything. You can see sure. even how to contact them as well, so. This is this is ours, but you can see <laughs> all of that information. So, so. You, I mean, I did some research on the top contractors, right? These are the people who are giving out the most contractors, and Shai's gonna love this. So the, the number one is, is Lockhead Martin, which is an aerospace and defense, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, and this is why I think he's gonna love it, the Boeing Company. The good old Boeing Company. <laughs> um it, it, we, we talk about it a lot, even on Market Mondays, we were speaking about the Boeing company. Obviously, they, they work with the government. And this is this is where they're, they're giving out contracts to people, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And you think about what they, they do. They, they are basically a parts company. And the military, Navy has jets, Air Force, um, Marines. Everyone has all these different aircraft. So they're always going to be uh, big in this space, always. <laughs> You see why we love them so much? <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons. You know, the thing about the financial literacy space is that everything overlaps. And it's like, that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I brought Boeing stock uh, when it dropped so drastically is because I know that Boeing has, um, they work for the government. Absolutely. So it's like the government is not going out of business. If the government goes out of business, then we're all in trouble. We're all in trouble. It doesn't yes, matter. No, <laughs> so, wrong. <laughs> so the government's not going out of business. So I say that to say, like learning about this stuff and learning that, you know, Boeing, how Boeing is so intertwined with the government, it gave me a lot more confidence to be an investor in the company and buy their stock. So when you learn about one thing, like you might not even be, really think you might not think you're interested in learning about right. government contracts. Yeah. You might be interested in the stock market, but then you find out some information about Boeing or some other Lockheed Martin, and you might say, okay, I didn't know that before. Let me look at their stock. This mm -hmm. might be a good company for me to buy because I just found out that they're getting a billion dollar contract for the next two years with Air Force. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> and you can look that stuff up too. See all of that on that USA spending site, all that money yeah. they're making. I had no idea what Raytheon was, but I do now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we got a question, Jamal. The floor is yours. You're unmuted. Make sure you unmute yourself. Fellas, what's good? What's going on? Hey, Jamal. Hey, how are you? Um, I'm I, I wanted to ask a quick question. I don't know if you've uh, answered it before, but what's the average time frame to get the certification, whether it be for women-owned business or minority-owned? Okay. Uh, so I will also say that that varies, but uh, the longest that the process has been, I would say, four months. That's the, longest, that's the longest that it's taken. And that's all mostly because they didn't have the documents that they needed in place. But for me to go through the process of getting certified as a veteran owned business, um, maybe four weeks. That's how long it took. So, wow. So you're saying if you have all your paperwork, 
in order, it kind of just depends on you. It can take anywhere from four weeks to four months, just depending on that time frame. Or yeah. like, okay. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, somebody said about, what about nonprofit uh, organizations? So no, nonprofits do not uh, qualify. You have to be a for-profit business. So nonprofits, the, uh, if they want to go through the process, it'll probably be like through a grant process. Please don't ask me about those. <laughs> but yeah. you private can go owned, right? to private owned, not state owned. Right. <laughs> you can go to um grants.gov to look for federal government grants. So that's a the all that's all I have for you on that one. No, that's cool. What, what what is the average pay for like a government contractor? Do you know? No, I don't because the the contracts vary. So when it comes down to like contractors who are really just people, you know, working or even uh, like winning a large contract, they vary like, and it's, it's ridiculous. Like I said, anywhere between, you know, from what $1 to all the way up to like 10 billion or, or even more than that sometimes. So there's no like line, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I've saved um, my most challenging questions that I couldn't figure out. <laughs> for the part. So I hope you're ready. So I know that there's different contract types, right? Mm -hmm. So can we talk about some of them? So I'll start with the fixed price contract. I think I can get that, but could you explain that to the audience a little bit? Okay. So fixed price contracts is when you basically, uh, you, you come up with the price up front and it's really explanatory kind of in a sense, but uh, you come up with that price and uh, basically on the back end, uh, you, you can't like add on anything. So you stick, you have to stick with those different prices for those fixed price contracts. If that makes sense. I hope so. Because a hundred thousand is going to be a hundred thousand. We can't That's add it. No more, no less. That's fixed price. If, what about... No no matter how long it takes, like if you say, oh, it's going to take me a lot longer to do this job, like that's on you. So uh, you try to like stay like a little bit away from those fixed price ones only because things happen, things change. Uh, unless it's just like a product and you know you can get them to the, get it to them in that time. That you can right. So we wouldn't do any construction in a fixed price contract. Not at all. No way. We're mm -hmm. setting ourselves up for failure. How about a time and materials contract? Time and materials? Yeah. Uh, so those are mostly parts ones. Uh, those, the time, the the parts and materials one, that's that's good to be in because you really just have to, you know, get those parts, those tools, parts, and materials to those those individuals. So um, and the pricing on those, I haven't done many of those, but I can't really tell you the pricing on those those parts and materials. But those are some good ones because, like I said, it's you literally shipping the products and stuff to them. So the, the tools, parts, and materials. All right, we got, we a, got, we got a, a question question. from Rachel. EYL University member, Rachel. Rachel, you are unmuted. The floor is yours, unmute yourself. Hey guys. Um, How you doing? Thanks for another good session. But a quick question. After you are a little more experienced and say you're bidding on something that is out of your area, what is your experience or your ideas of the best way to get started? Rachel, yeah? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, we didn't hear the last no, part of what you, you said. You cut out. Oh, so if you're trying to bid on something out of your area, <laughs> what do you think is the best way for you to get subcontractors? And you said out of your area in terms of like location or out of like the, the scope of Yeah, lo location. Um, so the best way to do that would be to find companies in that area that does the same work that you do. Um. So that's the best way to do that. Contact those companies, get quotes from them before you even bid on this contract to know how much, you know, that cost is going to be. And then you can reach out to them, you know, once you win that contract and let them know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, shout out to Rachel. Yeah. All right. So my, my last contract type is the IDIQ contract. Indefinite uh, delivery, indefinite, uh, I think quantity. Is that what that stands for? I hope I got that right. And those are the ones you want. You want those IDIQ ones because, so what that is, is you're basically on the hook with them, right? So with the IDIQ ones, let's say, you know, we only, we'll, you get a contract to be the, to provide, 
for uh, to provide laptops. And it's an IDIQ one. So that means that they can come to you at any time to, per to purchase laptops, to purchase these different pro um, products or whatever services that you're selling because you have that contract. So those are usually under like a multiple award schedule. And you can get one of those with the GSA. Um, so when you become a part of that multiple awards, you can get access to do those different type of contracts and also the 8A program um, to be able to do those type of contracts. So those are the ones you definitely want to get. You want to get those. I start that in my notes. Those are the ones that you want. <laughs> you want to get. Them. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's a lot of information. For a whole lot of game. To process. Um, <laughs> once again, so your company, right? Can you explain exactly what your company does? Yes, so we have a software platform where we simplify the pla the process for businesses going through it. So businesses can actually go to our platform, sign up and create a profile to find and do opportunities with government and bid on opportunities with government agency. Um, but we also on the opposite side have a consulting and training component of the company where we help businesses, you know, through classes like this, go through the process of how to sell, how to do business with the government, how to get certified. Um, and we go through, you know, those processes of doing that. And we do it through different ways. We'll provide webinars um, or we'll work with organizations. Um, like we work with the Urban League, got contract with them before to teach businesses, you know, more about uh, selling and doing business with government agencies. And then we're also working on an accelerator, a six week accelerator to get businesses through the process of doing so, business. Yeah, because somebody asked that earlier in the, in the um, YouTube, they said, does she do consulting? So you do, your, your, your company does consulting? Yes, yes. Okay. And I, so put, two I, side put your, I put your Instagram handle in the description, but what's the website? So it's www.govlia.com. So that's govlia.com. Um, and yeah, check it out. We got some um, trainings on there. We have like a different things that are coming up and make sure you create a profile on our platform because the more businesses, the more businesses we have on that platform, we can get more agencies involved to uh, provide more opportunities. So make sure you create a profile um, at app.govlia.com. Perfect, perfect. We got, yeah, we got a couple more questions from EYL okay. University. Barbie, what's up? You're unmuted. Go ahead. Okay, hi. This is my last question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the um, on the joint ventures, are there uh, a certain amount of lifespan that they can have, meaning they can only be like, you know, three years, four years? Uh, it depends on the program. Like if you're doing it for a program, they may have stipulations on it, but otherwise, no. Okay, because something that I've seen with joint ventures is that um, what they'll do is create the same exact en entity, but then they'll say JV2, like mm -hmm. with the number two. Have you seen that before? I've that seen that. But like I was saying, it's mostly because of that program, that particular program. They're trying to expand, you know, the time frame in that program as long as they can to get those benefits. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, but when they do the JV2, is that even though they still, they create another DUNS number, mm -hmm. um, like it's another um, entity, <laughs> it's still under that original LLC, correct? So mm -hmm. it's still that original company because they didn't create a new company. They just got a new DUNS number. Yes, unless they did it as a DBA. If they did, but a DBA like a, like a yeah, so if they changed the name and just did like the fictitious name or they started mm -hmm. it as a, a new company, um, like underneath that initial company. Yeah, Isn't but it's it? still all underneath the LLC because it has yeah. to be an LLC, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay, just confirming. Thank you. That's Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Uh, no, MD, we're coming to you right yes. now. You're unmuted. The floor is yours. One of our top earners. <laughs> Hi, uh, hi guys. I was yeah. just trying to like upload all of these websites that she's mentioning. Um, thank you so much for the knowledge that you are helping us um, out with. Hello? Yeah, Hello? Oh here. my gosh. I've been just talking by myself. Uh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> thank you guys for this opportunity once again. And I have like all of the tabs open. Um, mm -hmm. Is this going to be available for... Um, us learners on the website yes yeah and this okay. this 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 one is actually on youtube so it's on youtube too but yeah we'll we'll get um yeah yes 
Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's a simple answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then also, um, as far as um the DBA conversa conversation, um, do you have to have a um ID, a tax ID to apply for your business? Yes. Please? Okay. You have right. to have that tax ID. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Shout out to EYL University in the building. Shout out to the YouTube community. Y'all uh, deep in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a YouTube question. Oh, here it is. Um, shout out to Marty on YouTube. He said, what's uh, your top three tips to secure a contract? Um, so top three, I, I think I already said before, was to be focused. Uh, but to really target, re do your research, uh, like using those different tips, I mean, those different sites to do your research, and then being proactive, like reaching out to them before these opportunities come out. Uh, don't wait until, you know, you are finding the opportunities on the SAM.gov website. Nothing's wrong with waiting, um, but at the end of the day, you want to be on the front end, right? So it's two, it's really two spaces, um, like two sides of the procurement process when doing business with the government. So you have the pre-acquisition phase, in the acquisition phase. You, you want to be in that pre-acquisition phase because that's before it goes out for a competitive bid. And like I said, being proactive over reactive. That's my biggest tip, uh, my biggest three tips in there. So I hope you got them. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole lot of game, a whole lot of game right there. Um, this video is going to stay on YouTube and um, yeah, we'll have it on EYL University as well for all of the earners. Um, EYL University, this is just this is just one of the many things that we got rolled out. We got a whole platform. Um, code, I'm gonna put the code in here. Yeah, yeah. EYL149, it's going up in May. May 1st. May 1st, but right week. now it's That's 100. Next week. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, next week. It's two yeah, weeks. Week. Uh, $149 for the whole year. That's like $12 a month. Yeah. It's pretty much free. Yeah. Um, and MG the Mortgage Guy, shout out to him. He was on a breakfast club today. Yeah, shout out to Sal, man. Shout out to our brother. MG, MG the Mortgage Guy, he, he's the head of our real estate Facebook group. He was on a breakfast club with our assets over liabilities hoodie. And he gave us right. a shout out. So DJ Envy was on uh, Earn Your Leisure too. Another alumnus. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, so we got to do more work together. Uh, I'm glad that we was able to, I know I was kind of going back and forth with you for a couple of <laughs> weeks. So thank you for having patience. Uh, but yes, we definitely got to do more stuff together. For Absolutely. sure. I think that this is something that um, is very beneficial and especially, you know, in our community, we, yeah. don't, we don't know mm -hmm. enough about it to take advantage of it. And I'm pretty sure that there's a lot more topics to discuss, like under this umbrella, yeah. right? Yeah, even we really just hit the tip of the iceberg. Like I was yeah, doing yeah. A, a high level overview, but if you go into like the certifications, NAICS codes and all of that stuff, it's way more, you know, that has to go into it. So, and then also how you reach out, creating capability statements and marketing to the government. It's a bunch of more, it's a bunch more to go into it, but we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I mean, it's, this is just a testament. As we learn, we teach. Like prior to uh, having this conversation with you, I was completely oblivious. I'm sort of a shy. I had a little bit of knowledge of it, but <laughs> after doing the research and getting into the studies of it, it's like, wow, so much. So thank you for sharing your knowledge and, and, and giving us your time. We really appreciate it. Nah, for sure. Shout out to Ch Choice to Chance, my boy Keon on, on the Super Chat. Yeah, yeah. Check in. Shout out to everybody that's just joined EYO University. And I put, I put, um, I put your, your your Instagram tag in the um, description as well. So if anybody wants to hit the get information and I guess all your website and all that information is in the, is in the, the link of your bio, right? I would assume. Yep, that's in there. All of that's in there. Shout out to Miss McCoy on the super chat check in. Thank Appreciate you, Miss McCoy. We see you. Yeah, we keep this thing Thank going. You. <laughs> super chats. Yeah. We love the super, super chats. Super chats, Liddy, right now. Um, so yeah, I think that, like I said, you know. Um, let us know if, if 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 you like the content. I'm pretty sure everybody did like the content because yeah, it, it looks like positive. It was extremely yeah. valuable. Shout out to Bridget on the super chat check in. Um, and we could do more of these. We can do like a series of these. We can do a lot of different stuff. So you know, we're expanding our platform. Um, Wait, is this super chat mean they want us to keep going? What's going on? <laughs> they keep coming in. I know, right? <laughs> Hold on. Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> super chat is when you see the people put the the, the colored things with money in it. That's um that's the super chat. Yeah, it's it's just to say, you know what, thank you it's just, for, for it's giving us this, yeah. this information. It's just a show of, it's just a show of, of support financially, just to you know show some Keep appreciation for all this 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 free information. And this was dope because you actually shared your screen and actually gave information as far as like the websites and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I hope everybody paid attention. Shout out to Joel Fernandez on the super chat. 
Super Chats is pouring in they, right they now. They popping in. So you know what? <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Let's talk about one more thing. I, 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 got, I got a question. I got a question now. now I, look, I got my pad out. I didn't get to page two on my pad. You ready? Yeah, we got to going. All right, so, I, so I, I was watching the video. You know, sometimes, and that's why I love what we're doing, because it's like, we get to explain things in a language we, we don't understand. We understand. I watched a 10 minute video on the different types of contracts. And then I got to this point where contracting by negotiation. And then I saw F, I mean, RFPs and RFQs. And I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to just save this for eight o'clock. Can you talk to me about this Shout contract by negotiation? Shout out, Robert Adams. Shout out to Robert Adams on the super chat. Appreciate it. Super this chat. is really going right now. On the super chat. We super. litty, we litty. That's just what we yes. do. <laughs> no, but that's one of the biggest things that, that kind of like drew me into it to keep going as well. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you see companies like Amazon, like, you know, all these big companies, these big time companies getting these huge contracts. And then us at the bottom of, you know, bottom down here trying to figure out like, how are they growing so fast? They doing business with the like they get your tax dollars and they growing with yeah, that we, money. So we've been taught not to talk to the government. <laughs> that's it. And we oh, run yeah. away from it. So you know, these opportunities are huge. Uh, and like I said, even at the state and local government levels, you can do business with government with the local governments, with your college, all of that stuff, depending on like how much, you know, like what what products and services you provide is and even don't let me get started in the corporate space. I don't do the corporate space, but my friend, she does corporate contracts, uh, helps, helps businesses sell to corporate um, corporate companies uh, like Google's and Facebook's of the world. So, you know, that's an even bigger space. You know what I'm saying? So the opportunities are endless and we just, we need to start taking advantage of them today. Like sure. not yesterday. Shout out to Queen Wade on the super chat check-in. Appreciate it. So somebody said, what about workers comp when using subcontractors? Any info on that? No, I can't really give you anything on that. Workers comp when using subcontractors. Like when using subcontractors? Yeah, I'm not sure what they meant by that. I guess they mean like if um if uh her info, her info is in the description. I got her info in the description. Oh, Rashad, good name right there. Rashad <laughs> good $20 on a $20 super chat. Yeah, he is Yo, the so highest bidder. <laughs> it's like an auction. Yo, so, Sophia, we see you. Sold to Rashad. <laughs> so, $20. Sophia, Sophia we see you. Today. Shout out to you. Um, so what made you, what made you actually, like, was it that you was actually in the military and you actually saw it firsthand? Shout out to Patrick. 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 <laughs> Yo, it's yo, YouTube is Yo, y'all crazy. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Um, so yeah, while I was active duty, um, job. Your volume. Your volume. Oh, yeah, now you good. good. Now you good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> while I was active duty, I actually um purchase products on behalf of my department. So, you know, I joined right out of high school. So I'm like, what, 19 years old um, in Yokosuka, Japan on an aircraft carrier, 5,000 other people, right? Uh, and I have to manage like our operating budget for weapons department because my job was to build bombs in the Navy. Uh, believe it or not, y'all. You said um, build bomb? Bomb, yeah. not bombs. Bombs. Like, like bombs over Baghdad. Yes. Shout out, shout out <laughs> yes, aviation. Shout out to F. Davis. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yo, don't play with her. She know how to build bombs. Nah. Don't play with her. So you was so you was working. So all right. So you was building bombs, but then you was buying. All right. So finish, can you finish that? That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I was. So in addition to like my rate, I was I was basically doing like more administration stuff. So I was the um, supply parts manager. So I was managing the, the four hundred thousand dollar operating budget for our department alone. You know what I'm saying? And this is you know, on the aircraft carrier, like I said, 5,000 people, and we are only one department out of like 13. And then the ship had its uh, own budget as well. So, you know, that was, that was kind of what got me into it a little bit. Um, and at the time, like my division officer, 
he always wanted me to order stuff that we didn't have on the ship and it required me to do a whole bunch of extra work at the time it got on my nerves but you know now I'm extremely grateful for it because I was able to leverage that knowledge on the outside to learn how to sell to the government after you know going through the process and that's kind of how you know it worked for me and I was able to you know share the message with people in a way that they would understand so it's been it's been going I, I kept it going so so good. you you use the leverage of being inside the game. They had you doing the service, and now you said, "All right, let me flip this. I'm mm -hmm. using for my own benefit." Absolutely. A real hustle. And say, use your job to create your own opportunity. That's what I did. So. There it is. That now I tell I tell everybody all the time: your nine to five is your first investor. What you do from six to twelve will determine if you keep that nine to five. You flipped yeah. it. Crazy. That exactly. So. Yo, you was making bombs. <laughs> <laughs> crazy I, this is the first person i've ever met that said that before really that's crazy we had like a hella ao so it's the aviation ordinance man shout out to all our aos out there um but yeah it's a, a huge rate aviation loading bombs on aircraft um make like putting them together all of that good stuff i got a, a photo of me like shooting the 50 cal i'm only like five five one so so i'm like this <laughs> so yeah it's, uh, so, it's something different. Yeah, I, I see somebody keeps putting um, DNA family. We see you. Yeah, our RFPs are uh, requests for proposals and RFQs are requests for uh, quotes or quotes. qualifications. So those we can are, quotes or when, qualifications. When, when, when do those come into play? So a uh, RFQ is what they'll usually put out when they really only need pricing to purchase something, right? So if it's like below a certain threshold um, that they don't need to like send it out for bid, um, they can do a RFQ. Uh, so request for quote. And then sometimes that RFQ can also mean a request for qualifications where they really just want to know, like we were saying before, what's your past performance? What have you done before? Um, and then the RFPs are like when is time like that acquisition phase when it's time to go out for market and they want everyone to respond with that proposal package telling them what are you going to do how you going to do it and how much you're going to call how much is it going to cost me and that's what those the rfps um that's when they usually come out so we're, so, we're not going to we're, we're not going to get an rfq if we're talking about micro purchases right it's too small no mm -mm. Oh. Now, now it will be some um, like at the, at the state level, the state government level, they can like up to a certain percentage, they can do, you know, let's just three quotes. Right. And they can do that anyway. They can search for businesses on Google. God dang, Miss Listen. Are you watching on YouTube? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, 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 yes, 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 <laughs> Yo. yes. Shout out to Sandra. $50. That's a record. That's an all-time record. $50. We're gonna, we're gonna super screenshot chat. that. Yeah, $50. Breaking news alert. $50, $50 super chat. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. She said she would be reaching out to you for the six weeks program. That is super duper lit. We yes. appreciate it. We appreciate we appreciate it because it's like you know to come here and just to provide information to the community. Uh, for free, you know, mm -hmm. and um, of course, we all have different programs and stuff like that. But sure. this whole thing was an hour and 20 minutes of information, so it's 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 uh, humbling that people actually take time to actually listen, and um, it's even more humbling that people would take time to financially show some some gratification for, for us sure. putting this together and putting together this platform. So, yeah, yeah, we don't we don't take it for granted, we appreciate all of our earners, everybody that has supported Earn Your Leisure. Everybody that supported all of our alumni, um, everybody that's come on the podcast, did YouTube, did yeah. Instagram, we, we, we can't take that for granted. Like y'all support us, but y'all also go out and support the people that we bring on. And from us, thank you. And I'm sure from them, thank you. We've seen a lot of the businesses grow from being on the platform. So that's what it's all about. When we talk about building an economy within ourselves, Absolutely. we're doing it, right? And y'all doing it too, because y'all going out and supporting all these businesses. So, so what is what is what is your six-week program? Somebody somebody asked, I didn't know you had a six. What, what is the six-week program? Oh, yeah, I said it really quickly. Okay, so the six-week program is called, it's our Grow with Government Accelerator. So um, through, that, through that program, 
Uh, we will be go a business will be able to leave with a small business certification. So you you will leave with a certification. Uh, you will leave registered with government agencies. You will leave with all the marketing tools you need, like the capability statement um, to talk about that. And then you will leave with the knowledge of how to find these opportunities. And the capstone is for you to bid on the opportunity. So you can, you in order to graduate the program, you have to bid on your first contracting opportunity. So that's our six week program. Um, and that website is growwithgov.org. So you have to apply for it because we have to be like, you know, it's, it's an intense program, it's group coaching, and we have instructors who are teaching it as well. So you have to go through the application process uh, for that, for us to determine if you're a good fit. So you don't, you don't just take anybody, you got to make no. sure that. Uh, no, we let we call they call them uh, Peters the the they, the time wasters. You don't want to do that. <laughs> mm -mm. That's the last thing. So <laughs> somebody had a question on EYOU. Um, no, they were answering the question. Answering the question. Yeah, okay. answering the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this is this was this is a very informative, yeah. very informative uh, conversation that uh, like I said, I wasn't aware of any of this stuff. You always hear about government contracts. You always hear about you know, the government buying different things from vendors, but mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't really know like what the process is to actually yeah. play the game. And if it's like, you know, if you're not playing the game, then you, you're always going to be on the sideline. So $100 billion business, $100 billion and 89,000 state and local government agencies. So there is plenty of room and space to go get it. Okay. How many, how, what's the biggest contract that you've seen from like uh, a business that, like a small, not like a big business, but like a small business, like uh, small business, $15 million. What, what kind of business was it? A security company. Uh, so they provide, it's down in Miami. So he provides um, security services to um, like throughout the city um, and, and also without in the county for some um, of the different events that they host. And then of course, you know, we just had the Super Bowl down here. And when the, the Super Bowl is in that area, they partner with the cities got a contract. I, I um, have businesses who got contracts to do business with them during throughout the Super Bowl as well. So um, yeah, the, those opportunities are huge. So he yep. does, like I said, um, That's crazy. security services. Shout out to AC Smith on the, on the super chat, check in, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. All right. Any, any last questions from YouTube or EYL University? Um, anybody have any questions? Any questions? Somebody said, how you send them bread in the super chat? <laughs> <laughs> super chat. I think the super chat is on the, on the right, right? Yeah, it's on the right. I think you got to update um, yeah, like YouTube. What? Cause my thing isn't updated, but if you update YouTube. Uh, all right, right, right. So the, if you go like, a, when you're going to make a comment, it's yeah, on the right. On the bottom right, it has like a dollar sign thing. Oh, shout yeah, out to Sabrina on um on EY. She said she just signed up. She's our yeah. newest earner. What's up, Sabrina? You got some catching up to do. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we're just going to keep adding. So yeah. we're going to make it very difficult for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, well, welcome welcome to the community, EYL. Uh, like I said, I know we've been going back and forth for a while, but Sure. Hopefully this is just the beginning of um, a lot of different stuff that we can actually do together because I'm, I'm sure that it'll be tremendously beneficial to a variety of different people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So we got, I can't see those. Who's that? Mary? Shout out to Mary. Mary, what's going on? Mary on the Super Chat. Yeah. Chat. I, I know a... Mary. I worked with Mary before. So yeah. Mary, <laughs> Shout out to Mary. What if, what if, somebody said, what if you have no past performance and your business idea is brand new? I would assume no, right? Uh, so you can partner with another business. Partner. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. Partner with another business. And now, unless it's something like that's innovative, like I was saying, these new, you know, software and solutions that are coming out, if it's something like that, you can do business with them. But the way that you'll do it is completely different. You'll be, you'll be reaching out to them, basically pitching, you know, your new or innovative solution. Like if it's something that's not on the market at all. Uh, but if it's, you know, you're just starting out, uh, partner with another business. That's the best way. If it's a common business and you're just starting out, partner with another business to build that past performance and leverage their past performance. So that way, you know, when you go to respond, you can say, we've done business with X, Y, and Z. Maybe you haven't, but your partners have, and you can leverage that. Yeah, shout out to DA family. He said, watch the movie War Dogs. That 90%. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't yeah. watch that movie. <laughs> shout, shout, <laughs> it don't work like that. <laughs> shout out to Sophia too. I, I missed Sophia. Sophia on the check in. Well, I shouted her. Oh, so on the yeah. super chat. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. all good. We're gonna shout you out again. Yeah. And shout out to Senna. Senna on the check in. We missed that also. Uh -huh. Oh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Records, shout out to Ishmael, $100 super chat, $100 super chat. Yes. Yeah, you, we're, I'm going to screenshot this, Ishmael. You, you <laughs> broke the record. You broke the record. It's crazy. Ishmael. Ishmael, Ishmael. come through. Ishmael. Message me. You get a, a consultation for that. There it is. Message he said, me. He said, I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to have y'all put on Mount Rushmore, no cap. Y'all are really getting us. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's a blessing, bro. Yeah, appreciate you. Many, 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 many blessings your way, brother. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Sheesh, wow. this, is, this is a crazy night. It's a crazy <laughs> night. Man, see what happens when you, you, EYL University is crazy, <laughs> man. Like, you know, the platform is crazy. We just got really, really supportive um, base. And it, it, it feels like, it's like it's like it's like going to a concert, man. Yeah. We get so much love. These people are just so so. Yeah, people been saying I, I've been here since day one. I've been joining since the summer. It's crazy, man. Like we literally every day we thinking of something new to do, man. So to see the support that we that we get, you know, we not gonna stop. We going we gonna. And I've definitely been following too. Like I don't, I'm not in the stocks right now, but I'm what I'm listening every time y'all have that mar um, market Monday. I'm like, oh, there it is. Oh, breaking oh. news alert! Nah, breaking news alert! Nah, breaking news alert! Breaking news alert. Yeah, Sandra, that's how you feel. Check it. Sandra, fifty on the check. She said I won't be out. <laughs> Run it up! Run it up! <laughs> Sandra, <laughs> message me. Right message me. It's lit. It's lit. That's miss. One do I hear a 200? They got money. They got money. See what happens when you listen to Earn Your Leisure. You get your pockets right. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's I don't even know what to say. I, I'm overwhelmed. We just what acknowledged the 150. We just, well, y'all yeah, must be there. They must, late. Yeah, they delayed. The internet slow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, somebody just made it rain in, in, in the super chat. Oh, oh MPJ Taylor. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Oh, what's up? I'm what's so up? excited to find Mr. Miller. Where we Oh, it's one of his um that's love. One of his parents at um at the Trinity. School, Shout out you know, y'all. I miss I miss those kids so much. Troy's a teacher. Troy's a teacher. <laughs> yeah, man. And um, one of his parents um just 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 dropped the Benjamin Franklin in, in the so super dope. chat. I appreciate it. You know, I always say, like, yo, I, I I doubt that anybody that I work with actually knows that we're doing a podcast and that is having an impact. <laughs> so this is crazy to see that we got a parent. <laughs> Shout out to New Rochelle, man. I miss those kids so much. We were supposed to do something uh tomorrow uh with just like doing a drive by but we got to push it back so mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to just driving through the city just to see the kids man i, I th this is cool zoom is cool but like i'm more in interactive man so I, I need to see them there was one guy in new rochelle like i gotta meet this guy he 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 gave 167 people corona like, what? How, yeah, 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 like that because that's what he works at. He works in, in New Rochelle. New, that's like the Corona capital of the world. And it was. It was. <laughs> and it was this one dude. He must have been like a social butterfly that's and had crazy. like 37 girlfriends. I don't know. Nah, what nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get us. So what happened was he went to his synagogue, and from the synagogue, it spread. But um, it literally happened um not too far from my school, maybe a mile and a half up the street. Um, so yeah, we was in the epicenter. These guys were like, yo, why are you still going to work? I'm like, yo, kids are still showing up. So yeah. you know I mean? My first responsibility is to make sure they get return on their investment. Um, but after a while, it was I seen the government, he was like, yo, we're shutting it all down. And I was yeah, like, yo, we still here. Yeah, he was still going to work. That's how that's how dedicated he is to his to his <laughs> career. He was still going to they called the National Guard in and he's still <laughs> going to work. I'm like, why are you still going to work? It's obviously not safe. They got the National Guard. New Rochelle was like ground zero. And he was still going, like everything was okay. Dedication. See the level of dedication? You, that's you dedication. appreciate that? That's dedication. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I said. This is what we do. This is literally what we do all day. So this, this y'all just watching it live now. 
Yeah, but no, we, we, we definitely. <laughs> Brandon said he's not a TG, he's an educator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. So that means you've been listening from day one because we had that whole debate on an episode. Because I, I told him he's not a he's not a financial, he, he's in the finance world, but he's an educator. He's teaching people about finance. That's he's an true. educator too. We're just doing it in a different different way. Different way. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we definitely, like I said, this was definitely enjoyable. I'm glad we got a chance to do this. And uh, once again, thank you for having patience because I know we changed the date like a few times, but I think it was well worth the wait. And um, hopefully, you know, um, yeah, people check out your page and um, get a bunch of information and check out because we want to support you as well. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as it's, it's great, the information that you give, but I know you have a business as well. So it's important to support that. And um, yeah, let's, let's, let's stay in touch. Let's all, let's, I'm trying to see if anybody's going to throw a cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying I'm to say it. Crazy. <laughs> <I'm trying> crazy. <laughs> At least he being honest. Oh, I mean, the way it was going, it's like, I'm uh, saying, well, you, yeah, one thing I learned early on is, is never, never stop the party before it's over. And it was like, <laughs> the way that they was going, it's like, man, so I was just <laughs> trying to string this along. <laughs> Oh man, all right. Well, I guess that's it. We appreciate we appreciate all of the super chat love. This was extremely this was extremely crazy. This was extremely crazy. So um yes, yes. I don't know uh, how market money market money is gonna be <laughs> back. I don't know what they're gonna do on market yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be crazy. EYL uh fam, all our earners. Uh Sunday, we are having our our movie club discussion about uh too big uh, to fail. I am looking forward to it. The discussion questions are up on Facebook. If you haven't gone already, go and get it. Uh, Sunday at three. I think we're going to do it at three again. Um, that was cr last Sunday was amazing. I walked away like that. I got to go watch the movie again after having that discussion. So shout out to the earners that were there last Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing even more of you this Sunday. Uh, Matt's going to be there. We're going to have some more people come in. Um, but it was crazy. And then was everybody crazy. at EYL University, make sure you join the Facebook group. That's a part of being at EYL University. Oh, Yes, Miss Korea IT, Sandra, the super chat, appreciate it. So yes, that's um, a part of it. So make sure you, the, how you join the Facebook group is just go and request and that's it. We verify you're a member, you're part of the Facebook group and then you get all kinds of benefits for being that. So yes, thank you, appreciate it. Let's stay in contact. Everybody um, on YouTube, thanks for the love. Everybody on uh, EYL University, thanks for the love and we'll be back on Monday. Yep, yep. All right, peace. All right, y'all, peace. YouTube, we love y'all, peace. Peace. Still time for a super chat. <laughs>